Good morning, Facebook Live. This is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome to today. Oh my goodness. You are going to love today. And you are going to want to send this to your friends who really need encouragement, who are battling thoughts of the mind and the emotions in the heart, causing them to be overwhelmed with the thoughts of what other people think about them. This is the broadcast you want to save. If you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, save this in your watch list and make it one of your favorites because you're going to come back to it time and time again. Amen. Hey, Sue Gailey, Kimberly Mitchell, I see you ladies joining in. And to other people that are going to join in today, whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, thank you so much. I love each and every one of you. And I do mean that from my heart because I know you can be anywhere else. And most of the people on my videos, I know you personally. I've either met you in person, have a relationship with you, or I've talked to you in Messenger or on the phone. And so I love each and every one of you. Hey, Miss Donna and Ashley, God bless y'all. Thank you for joining in. Hey, Roseanne, Sherry, God bless you. Thank you for joining in. And so I'm going to scroll off comments for the moment and come back to it shortly thereafter. And so this is the broadcast, Saints of God. You are going to rise above what you believe others think of you because, let me tell you, it is killing you. God knows how he created you and designed you and of the, the power of intention and where your attention is controls your intent. I start talking about that in chapter one of the new book. I get into it in chapter two. In chapter three, revival intention, it is the focus about intent and intent starts in the heart, in the emotions, and it overtakes and consumes the mind. And so today, we're going to look at freedom, and you're going to get in freedom. And let me tell you what, saints, it cannot be emphasized enough. You know, uh, I'm going to have a lot of PTSD at the end of this book. Probably the last four chapters are going to be about PTSD and about identity and rising above the trauma of this present age. Remember the opposite of the Romans 12, 1, consecrated body. Romans 12, 2, transform mind, which the book Mindfulness, the mind of Christ, is all about, is the traumatized body and the condemned mind. And that is where you worry about what others think about you. If you're worrying about what others think about you, it is because the burdens of this world are upon you. Now, understand that Satan is the ruler of the kingdom of the world. And you and I are not of the world. We're in it, but we're not of it. We are of another kingdom, and that is the kingdom of heaven. And so our attention, Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first he heaven and heaven's plans. That's why the Lord says, that we are to pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're not praying thy will be done in the world, on the world. No, we are, the kingdom of the world is here, but we're not of it. And that kingdom penetrated the earth when Adam and Eve ate the fruit and another kingdom was born, and that is the kingdom of darkness that takes its shape, form, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so you're going to have that dis-ease in your members that you're either good or bad, good or bad. And so that spiritual dis-ease, if you are not on the wise and discerning, you're going to be caught in that trap. And one of the indicators that I mentioned yesterday is about judging others. If you're judging others, you are in the world. You are in the world and you have to seek God in fasting and prayer and repent so that you're not of the world anymore and that your heart is pure. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. They shall behold God. Amen. And so who can ascend to Matthew 24, the heel of the Lord, he that has clean hands where you've not shed innocent blood, you're not thinking, talking poorly about others, and he that has a clean heart that has not lifted it up to an idol, amen, 
And that's the things of this world, the things that are in this world and the opinions of this world. And so one of the things that God really wants to emphasize today, and you're going to see it in chapter four of the fourth dimension in the new book, The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, which is an open thesis. Mindfulness, Mind of Christ, was my thesis to God. And The Forbidden Fruit, The Spiritual Disease, is a sequel to that, an expounding of the word of truth about the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and is an open thesis where I'm bringing you the sciences with scripture to show you the inner workings in all the invisible realm outside of you and inside of your members about what is going on in relation to the kingdom of heaven and this world. And we don't want this world in our members. As we come into salvation, we are working out our salvation in fear and trembling, Philippians 2.12, and we're being pruned of the things of this world. And so one of the indicators is anxiety. But specifically today, I want to look at the anxiousness about having the cares of this life, about uh, pleasing others. And you say, Robin, well, I'm not a people pleaser. Well, if you're worried about what other people think about you, and please do not say, oh, I never worry about what other people think about me. Uh, that is called pride, okay? And you are not Jesus Christ, and so you are not above this. Amen. Hey, Margaret Sue Gailey and Liz Rodriguez, God bless y'all. I'm seeing other people. I just scroll, and now I'm scrolling comments off again. And so you're really going to see the whole chapter of Isaiah 61 as never before in chapter 4, which I'm about to begin. Chapter 4, thank you, Lord, and ending chapter 3. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, literally, Lord. Five months of writing a chapter. Oh, my goodness. But like Rich says, it is beyond phenomenal. And he could not put it down. And chapter three is about 70 pages. 70 pages. So what we're looking at today is first and foremost, I want to bring to you the health and wellness component that many, all pretty much, inflammatory diseases are not just toxins, okay? Okay. It's toxins plus being a people pleaser and being worried about what others think about you. And in that people pleasing, you become a perfectionist and you just beat and flog yourself. And that is the traumatized body and the condemned mind that traumas from your past, which have led into a historical pattern in your life, whereby you are a people pleaser, and as a result, you worry about what others think about you, and you modify and adapt to those perceived, whether real or imagined, uh, perceptions of what others think. And that is the most dangerous thing in life. Multiple sclerosis, all of your inflammatory diseases, Parkinson, ALS, uh, all of your fibromyalgia, all of these diseases are the result of the component mentally and emotionally of being a people pleaser, which includes worrying about the opinions of others. And so you cannot go there because this will literally kill you and send you to the grave before your time. You know, God says in his word that there is that that there is such a lack of knowledge and because of that ignorance that many people are going to the grave because they lack the knowledge and the wisdom of God and they're entering into a place with that ignorance of living a life that is under the kingdom of the world and it is weighing them down and so I'm going to read Isaiah 61 what's interesting is yesterday, God said, Robin, I want you to post Isaiah 61, 6 and 7. And then today in my memories was where Dakota Spicer, whom I married, he and his beautiful wife, Layla, in 2016, uh, 2017, uh, 2016. I married them. Yeah, 2016. And uh, in the memories was where Dakota had tagged me with Isaiah 61, 7 back in 2016. And saints, I am just beyond excited because this is in chapter four of the new book. 
and it really shows you things as never before in relation to the kingdom of heaven. So I want to read specifically verses six and seven that I reshared on my wall. And I want to bring the wisdom of the Lord and truth to let you know that in relation to Isaiah 61, three, that cloak of heaviness, that cloak is of the world. It is the world's opinion. It is the world's problems. It is the world's distractions. And so you have to get under that assignment of the pit of hell by rising above the opinions of the world. We, at Ephesians 6, were battling not against flesh and blood. We're battling against principalities, powers of darkness that are rulers and principalities over the kingdom of the world. And those that are under its influence are people knowingly or unknowingly under the rule of the kingdom of the world by the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, good and evil. And so because of that spiritual dis-ease in their members and the need to have reprieve and relief in their soul about how bad they are because they're under that tree where they're getting their identity and that's weighing them down, they have to cast those thoughts onto others and make them a scapegoat. And so it's getting with other people, talking about them, making that person look bad. It is thinking poorly about others and about their behaviors and understand that you will always criticize what you don't understand. And so before you criticize someone, which is judging them, try to see them as a little child and imagine them still struggling with things like a kid would struggle. And it just causes you to humble yourselves and to esteem others more than you esteem yourself. And that is also in relations to Romans 12, that we're to esteem others more than we esteem ourselves. And so we do that when we see others at a vulnerable state and innocent as a child born into this fallen world who, for whatever reason, like Mehebesheth, who was brought to the king's table and he was of the lineage of Jonathan and dropped when they were running out of the palace and he became afflicted forever and was lame from that point and had to be carried to the king's table and was invited by David the king to come to the table and eat. And so somewhere in our lives, we were dropped, whatever that looks like, whatever age you were, you could be young, you could be older, but you were dropped. And so because of that, the afflictions of this present world, of the opinions of this world attached to those that are of the influence of this world and are pressing their judgments of badness upon you to relieve themselves momentarily by looking at how bad you are supposedly in order to make themselves feel better and good under this dis-ease. It's always a balanced state when you're under the influence of the world that you wanna be up by feeling good. And if that means that in order to get to feeling good, and this is you over here and this is other people, in order to feel good, that means that you have to put someone else down. And that is why Jesus refers to this in Luke 6, 42, about taking the log out of your eye. He's talking about taking the world out of your eye, taking the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the means by which you perceive everything in your life, that identity, that form, and instead seeing through the eyes of love and where love is patient, love is kind, love believes the best, love is long suffering, love never keeps a record of wrongs and thinking the best about others and not dwelling on what others have done to you. Forget about it, okay? Forget about it. And the word forgive actually means to release and to let go, just let it go, okay? And so Isaiah 61, verses six and seven, this is what happens when you're free of the world's opinions and you have that garment of expressive praise, and that is a representation of heaven. And it lifts you up into the state of knowing who you are 
as you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. And from that position, you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. And so you're no longer under the influence of the opinions of other people. You are under the power of the kingdom of heaven. And what the Father, who you call Abba, Abba Father, what He says about you. Amen. And so Romans, uh, not Romans, uh, Isaiah 61, 6 and 7, Scripture says, But you shall be called the priests of the Lord. People will speak about you as ministers of our God. You shall eat the wealth of nations, and the glory once that of your captors shall be yours. Instead of your shame, your former shame, you shall have a twofold recompense. Thank you, Jesus. Instead of dishonor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Woo! Hallelujah. Amen, Miss Debbie. What they had forfeited, an everlasting joy shall be theirs. Now, I'm going to read these two verses again. And in these two verses, it is having heaven's opinion. It is not worrying about what others think about you because they are under the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, understand it can be real or imagined because under that influence of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, if you feel bad, you can also misinterpret someone else's uh, behavior and thoughts about you. And you can project on your own self by projecting on them what you think about yourself. You're reflecting your own thoughts onto others. And so sometimes it is imagined. It isn't real. But there are times that it is real. And you have to understand that people under the influence of the kingdom of this world are going to have to navigate their own emotions and trauma that are bringing condemnation by relieving themselves of it and putting others down to push themselves up. And that is making you a scapegoat. And guess what? You're not anyone's scapegoat. Leave them to themselves. Get away from them. It's not worth thinking about if they don't honor you if all they do is just bring you in contempt, guess what? Like my friend Sherry said, the gift of goodbye. Goodbye. I don't have to care what you think about me. I just know what God has said about me. But you have to get this in your knower. And the way that you get, your, get it in your knower is Matthew six thirty three. You seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things are added unto you. He is adding his opinions, his thoughts, his intention about you. And this is what the Lord does with a garment of expressive praise. Amen. Isaiah 61 verses 6 and 7. I'm going to read this one more time and then we'll be done. And understand, the other place that we see double-fold portion is Zechariah 9, 12. Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope, for the Lord shall restore to you double your former prosperity. Amen. Isaiah 61, 6 and 7. But you shall be called priests of the Lord. Hallelujah. People will speak of you as ministers of God. Woo! You shall eat the wealth of nations and the glory once that of your captors shall be yours. Instead of your former shame, you shall have a twofold recompense. Instead of dishonor and reproach, your people shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double what they had forfeited everlasting joy shall be theirs. Double for your trouble. Why? Because the word tribulation in Greek means afflicted. It means difficulty. It means and indicates trouble. Double for your affliction, for your reproach. This is also Isaiah 54, 4, 
where he says, and I did this in God's Firewall School of the Prophet session for the spirit of knowledge in that book with the brain and the anatomy and physiology in the inner workings of the brain, where Isaiah 54 is in that book, most of that chapter, and Isaiah 54, 4 says, no longer shall you remember the reproach of your widowhood, of your forsakenness. Literally, at Exodus 10, 19, Holy Spirit comes in like a strong west wind and removes all the locusts. Amen. Let me, I always like to make sure I have that right. Yes, Exodus 10, 19. Holy Spirit, where God sends a strong west wind to remove all the locusts and cast them into the Red Sea. Those locusts are the trouble of this world. It is what is troubling you in your soul. Get rid of the locusts. Allow the Holy Spirit to breathe upon you and to remove those memories and prune you in which you have been influenced and weighed down by the cares of this world and be set free. And don't take on other people's opinions. If they say things to you, if they treat you a certain way, just bye-bye. I don't care what you think about me because I know who I am. And I'm not going to take on your opinion because your opinion is the world's opinion, which is the opinion of the ruler of this world, which is Satan's opinion. And I'm going to see you as the eight-year-old child who, for whatever reason, has been dropped. And in that space, you're navigating your own badness because you're tied to the tree of the knowledge of good and bad, good and evil, under the influence of the world by pleasing other people. And so because of that, you find the need to get with others and talk about me. No, thank you. Don't want that. Don't need that. That is not my address because Jesus, woo, hallelujah, came to bring heaven, another kingdom, and it removes the world's opinion. It removes heaviness, hallelujah. It removes dishonor. It removes shame. It removes Satan's plans, and it brings me the Father's plan, Heaven's plan. And Heaven says, I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. And although I messed up and in my mess, you can't handle it. Guess what? It is okay if you can't handle my mess. If you can't handle my nervous breakdown because I'm finally waking up to who I am, guess what? I don't care. Because I know who God says I am. And if you think I'm living in a fantasy land, that is A-okay. I love you, Miss Debbie. That is A-okay. It is A-okay because I'm going to take my fantasy land of the kingdom of heaven and forget your horror house of the kingdom of this world and the drama and the trauma that comes with that house. And I say, no, no. No, no. <laughs> and I say yes to God. I say yes to Jesus. I say yes to heaven. I say yes, hallelujah, to honor. I say yes to what God has for me. I say yes to his hope. Yes to his love. Yes to loving me in my messed up state, hallelujah, because he's about to bring the age to come, heaven, and bring a message. And what you have criticized because you don't understand the kingdom of heaven, you're about to be mesmerized by the miracles of our almighty God. Woo! Hallelujah. Someone needs to hear this. Don't give one ounce to the worm, to the worm that's harassing you from this world about the opinions of others. Cling to the robe of Christ, to his garments, like the woman with the issue of blood. And everybody's calling, unclean, unclean, unclean. I don't think I'm unclean because I've touched his garment. Hallelujah. So bye-bye to all of y'all unclean people because you see who you are. Saints, when you know the Father's heart, you see others through God's eyes. Listen, 
a big thing that God told me years ago when someone I loved had turned on me, had this evil dream. And let me tell you what, dreams can also come from Satan. And if the dreams are lifting you up and putting other people down, more than likely, it could be a satanic dream of Leviathan of pride. And so you need to fast and pray and make sure your heart is right. And so someone had a Leviathan dream that lifted them up and put me down. And that dream had traumatized me. And it was the dream where I was in this elevator with Rich and they were praying for me. And the elevator dropped and they were praying in tongues for me in the elevator. And I, the elevator opens and alligators are biting my legs and people have cups and my blood is going in into their cups and they're drinking on my blood. Uh, that is a pit of hell dream. It is Satan. And I told the woman, I said, your dream came from Leviathan because it is lifting you up and putting me down. I said, that is not a dream of the Holy Spirit. That is a dream straight from the pit of hell. Now, understand this, saints, that people can have opinions about you and it will attack you if you allow it. Amen, Andrea. And you cannot let it. And so this is what God taught me many years ago when that happened. He said, Robin, it doesn't matter what she thinks about you. And of course, she blocked me because she could not handle the truth. She could not handle the truth. And so after she blocked me, God said, Robin, I want to teach you something. And this is where it comes back to judging others. Because remember, love believes the best. First Corinthians 13, 7. God said, it doesn't matter what she thinks about you. I said, okay, God. He said, what matters is what you think about her. And he said, no matter what, you have to love her and you have to believe the best about her. Saints, that is something that will set people free right here. That although other people judge you and have opinions, if they are real, guess what? It doesn't matter what they think about you. What matters is what you think about them. Now that is food for thought, you royal priesthood, you holy nation that have a double portion of honor. God bless you. I love you and have an amazing day.